I just got the custom plate for the 300. <laughs> but um, I've been toying with the idea of selling it. Not real sure I need it. Um, I mean, I definitely don't need it. <laughs> but um, just been kind of thinking about, like, you know, what can I do otherwise other than wash it? Um, you know, I had my eyes set on a Tesla again, and I really want to do the Model X again. I want to just go ahead, pull the trigger, and go for the Model X. And um, the only way to do that is to sell this and the Durango. Uh, I would have to get the perfect amount for both of them in order to do exactly what I want to do. Now, <laughs> the hope was to pull a little extra profit and have a little extra money, but um, realistically, I don't see that happening. And here's why. Uh, the model, this is not a model, this is 300. <laughs> the model 300. Uh, the 300 um, is not worth as much as you think it is at this point. Um, yes, it came out with an MSRP of 56,000 and that's what I got it for. Um, I was really worried about markup and <laughs> I shouldn't have been because um, there's so many of them, the market is now flooded with them and no one can afford to buy one. Um, interest rates are at an all-time all -time high, and no one wants to pay that high interest rate on this novelty car. Sure, eventually, they probably will be worth a lot, and having one will mean, you know, that you're going to be able to pull a great profit off of it, and that it's going to be a limited edition thing. Right now, it's not. Um, within 100 miles, there's 5 to 10, last I checked, um, and dealers are now selling them below MSRP. Uh, I've seen one as low as 53000 because they're in abundant supply and dealers don't like them to sit on the lot very long. So, let's quickly go over this one, make a little review, because I asked the dealer that I bought the car from, what would you give me for it? And they offered 50000 And I'm thinking... If they sold it at today's going price, they only stand to make $3,000. That is a huge risk for them to take this car at that price. And I think, I think it's a pretty good deal. I think it's worth taking because I don't know where the car market's going from here. Um, sure, maybe, maybe this will become a limited edition car. And the value will go up. But when our country sets at the edge of a recession, we're in a recession, but they won't call it that. So we'll say that when our country sets at the edge of a recession and interest rates are so high, people can't afford to buy these, they're, they're not going up in value anytime soon. And um, they might one day, I don't know, but I don't want to be the one sitting here taking that risk because if they don't, the only reason I bought this car was in hopes that it would go up in value. And the recession has ensured that did not happen at this point in time. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to sit here on it for, you know, a year, two years, and it still not be worth anything. Um, I want to be able to enjoy it. And that's the, the other thing about this car is, um, I guess the, oh, there it goes. Um, 700 miles, 742 miles. I, I don't drive it uh, because I don't want it to have a whole lot of miles on it. You know, it's worth more when it has less miles. And yes, it's a very nice car and it has things that I've never had before, like heated and cooled cup holders. But um, but overall, it's uh, it's really not worth the price. I mean, you can get a base model 300 for in the 30s and this one's 20,000 more. But what are you really getting out of that? Just the 6.4 liter Hemi. Um, everything else in here is the same. The screen is the same. It's the same older Uconnect. It's not the newer Uconnect. Um, it doesn't have like Wi-Fi hotspot and all that built in it, whereas the newer ones do. Um, everything here is the same as it was in my 2015. I mean, maybe some carbon fiber here, but that's about it. Um, everything is pretty much the same except for the engine. And the engine's cool. It makes a lot of noise, but is it $20,000 cool? I don't know about that. I mean, it's definitely not as fast as any of my Teslas. It's not as fast as my Rivian. My pickup truck will take off faster than this car. Um, so it's not like it's about speed. It's more about sound. And sure, that, that 
plays a good factor in it, but is it really worth the price? And I don't think so. Um, I'm sure I could enjoy the heck out of this car if I daily drove it, but um, I don't want to daily drive it. I don't want to put more miles on it than I have to because then that makes the value go down and in, in a year it's not worth what I want to get out of it. And like I said, the whole point of buying this car was in hopes that I would make a profit. Um, a week before I bought the car, I had decided I didn't want this car. I mean, like I didn't need it and it, it didn't really serve a purpose for me, so I didn't want it. But they sent me a video of it starting up and I was like, oh wow, I kind of do want this car now. <laughs> so that was the deciding factor was the sound and how cool it was. But really, is it that cool? I don't think so. Let's go over a few things about it that, um, well, like I said, it's, it's exactly like my old car. And my old car had this problem that I hated. I hated about the car. I learned to live with it but it was because it was all I could afford at the time. Uh, and that is the air conditioning. When you turn the air conditioning on, it has a very distinct smell. I don't know if, you know, the air conditioner is leaking into like the air filter or something and it causes a smell, but you will get this very strong, distinct smell. And now the best thing I can compare it to, we have a lake and I have taken videos of that lake, you know, to, at the boat dock with the boats going in the water. Um, and that lake emits a smell. It is a very nasty lake. It's not one that you would go swimming in. You can go fishing in it. I don't know why you'd eat the fish out of it if it smelled that way, but it's, um, it's, it's not a very clean lake and the lake emits this smell and it's the same smell when I get in this car and I turn it on and the air comes on after a few minutes, that smell hits me and it did it in my other car. It does it in this car. Could you change the cabin air filter and maybe to fix it? Maybe, but this is a brand new car. It has less than a thousand miles on it and it's already doing it. I don't know that a cabin air filter is going to fix that. Other gripes, everything's incandescent. We don't have LEDs nowadays. <laughs> uh, even the headlights are HID, which um, I loved HID when I had my last uh, Chrysler 300 but I didn't have the opportunity to test LED and I believe LED lights are so much better, so much brighter, and you don't have to worry about longevity of the bulb. And this one, uh, it's one HID bulb that has a shutter that comes down and when you hit high beams, the shutter just goes away. And that's all it does to make your high beam and low beam. Um, it's the same bulb. So it doesn't flick on and off as you're changing your high and low beam. However, if you're driving and you're doing a flash to pass or whatever you want to call it, and you pull your, your lever back, that's, that's wear and tear on the bulb. It's not meant to flash on and flash off. It's meant to stay on and then go off. It's not meant to flash. Uh, and I've, I had several bulbs blow in my last car because of that. Uh, they're not intended to be flashed. Whereas LED, it really doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with them. It doesn't change the longevity of the bulb. Um, overall, this is the exact car I had with my 300. And honestly, if I wanted the, the reminiscing and I wanted another 300, I could go buy a 2015 used with, you know, a few thousand, 50, 60, 50, 60,000 miles on it for 15, 20,000 dollars. And I would have that reminisce of what I had. And it's the exact same thing this one is. The only difference is this one has a bigger engine. Let's look at the engine because that's pretty much all you're getting with this one. Um, sure, it's got some different things like um, the badging on the front here that shows it is a limited edition 300C. Um, but really, this is what it's all about. This is the meat and potatoes. 6.4 liter Hemi. Uh, yes, it's loud. It's got a loud exhaust from the factory. It's everything you want it to be in a sports car. Um, Dodge has really made a name for themselves with big, sporty engines and cars that can go fast. And when I look at this and I say it's a 6.4 liter, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is the Hellcat. And the ma major difference between this and the Hellcat is that the Hellcat is supercharged and this is not. This is not supercharged. This is not turboed. This is just a, a regular 6.4. Now that's still pretty good, but if I'm, if I'm gonna go spend a ton of money on a sports car, yes, I want it to have the 6.4,
but I think supercharging is kind of a must at this point to have that. Um, that's just my personal preference. I mean, that maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, everything I say is pretty much my personal opinion and, um, you may not always agree with it, but, um, anyway, um, on to the point of the video, uh, the dealer offered 50 for this car. And like I said, that is, I feel like a risk for them. Um, I was fully expecting somewhere between 50 and 55 as an offer. Uh, 50 is, is well within what I was expecting. And so, um, I think I'm going to let this go. Uh, they're going to get it. And, um, and we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, that's, that's part one of getting the new model X that I want to get and have already ordered. Um, so this trash that animals keep getting into, <laughs> let me try to set the camera up and start it up one last time. And that quite honestly is why I bought it. <laughs> After deciding that I didn't want it, um, they started it up and sent me a video of it and I bought it. That was the reason that changed my mind. But uh, like I said, I could probably enjoy the crap out of this car. It's just that it's so expensive. It's considered a limited edition and I don't drive it for that reason. And now I have to decide, is it worth getting rid of or not and i think it is in the spirit of talking about vehicles i'm going to sell <laughs> i did get them to price out the durango as well and um they came up with 45 which again is about what i expected um, i did an offer through carvana and vroom they both came back at 40 and i felt like 40 was too low for this uh, so I thought, well, I'll shop around and see what I can get. And I've only checked one dealer so far. I may take this one around to a few dealers and just see. I did tell them it had 40 more miles on it than it does because I thought it did. Um, so I may take this around to a few dealers and see what they'll offer. But 45 is about what I expected. I hope to get 45 to 50 out of this one. So uh, these numbers are on the lower end, but they are on my expectation of what I expected to get. And... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's exactly what I needed to get the Model X and pay cash uh, to sell this and the 300. So, um, so I mean, it's, it's perfect. Uh, I don't have any extra left over. I don't get to play around with any extra money to, you know, get the PPF done. I'll have to figure that out on my own. But uh, I can basically trade two cars for one. And... You know, what's funny about this entire story is I traded one car for two. And sure, the Model X has dropped dramatically in price, but I was able to trade the Model X for the Model 3 and the Model... No, what did I trade it for? <laughs> I think I got rid of the X to get the Rivian. But I didn't end up putting any of that money toward the Rivian. So technically, I got the Rivian... And I was going to pay it off using the Model X money. I didn't do that. I ended up getting the Model 3 for Toro and I got the Model Y. And then I traded the Model Y for this. I traded the Model 3 and put some money with it for that. So I guess I didn't really trade even. But, <laughs> but, um, but it is still funny how it works out because the prices came exactly to the numbers that I needed them to be to pay cash for the, the Model X and just be completely done have it title in hand no issues um the goal was to break even or make about a ten thousand dollar profit and if i made about a ten thousand dollar profit i was strongly considering throwing it toward the rivian just to help it get paid down more um if i take the only dealer's offers that i got um then it'll be a break even situation there won't be any extra but uh but that's better than I was expecting because, like I said, this one, 
uh, they're taking a big risk on it. And I think the Durango, Durango is one of the slower selling Dodge vehicles. So they're not really, really willing to pay as much for it because they know it will sit there a while. And, um, you know, whatever. That's kind of what I expected. So 